The latest thing about oral cavity cancer, um, in my opinion, is really about um, precision medicine and um, what we can do to find the genetic makeup of a cancer and they do to more, then sub subsequently determine treatment. At our center, we now start to impact everyone where we find if there are any action, actionable mutations. And with that, we can then dictate treatment. Otherwise, um, for oral cavity cancer, it's still the same treatment, which is surgery followed by post-op radiation plus or minus chemotherapy. I will be presenting later that um, if um, you have a mutation that is, for example, along the DNA repair pathway, such as ATM, then they're very susceptible to radiation therapy, then you can actually cure them with a lower dose of radiation, despite being oral cavity and unresectable. For thyroid cancer, um, the raw radiation therapy is very limited because it's really a surgical disease followed by radioactive iodine disease. However, I had a trial that we just completed at Sloan where I looked at the swallowing dysfunction on patients that undergo external beam radiation therapy. The trial is gonna close in terms of maturity um, next year, and um, the results are excellent and with very minimal mor morbidity. So the next step is really to find any also mutational markers such as BRAF or TURNT mutation, and these are pretending higher risk of thyroid cancer, and then we should add radiation after surgery. So far, I found that um, patients, contrary to popular belief, um, if we target the radiation field correctly, um, patients do not have so much toxicity. They can swallow normally after treatment. The other area is uh, about larynx, uh, larynx cancer, where um, there's, you know, larynx preservation is the longest debate. Depending on where you go, you're going to either get surgery followed by post op radiation or you're going to get chemo radiation. I think um, the direction we should go to is to find, again, this mutation. If we have any um, more um, genetically based or more susceptibility to radiation therapy uh, mutation, such, if, as, such as if you have an ATM gene for a T4 uh, lesion, then perhaps not consider upfront surgery because if you have upfront surgery, you're gonna have a total laryngectomy, which means the patient doesn't have a voice box. So you may have a chance to help these patients by not having a um, major surgery where they lose their voice box, but rather go on a larynx preservation route, which is with chemo radiation. In, in terms of larynx, um, the, um, for earlier stage patients, I think, though this is a surgical conference, um, I think the voice quality, where I have a randomized study showing that it's better with external beam radiation for T1 glottic cancer versus surgery. The problem is surgeons, when a patient has a tumor, they go see a surgeon first, and then they wind up having multiple surgeries before they come to radiation. By then, the voice quality is already pretty bad to start with. I'm not gonna make it better. So that's, I think, a big finding. I hope the surgeons can understand that for early stage tumor, um, radiation can offer equal rates of um, control and better voice quality. And in terms of um, fractionation, so as a radiation college, we, we talk about fractionation, and uh, the faster you finish, the better the local control. I think the general doctors, especially the referring pe uh, physicians, whether ENT, general ENT, or just primary um, medical doctor, they should just send the early larynx cancer to both the radiation oncologist and the surgeon and truly be multidisciplinary. Right now the problem is everybody goes to the surgeon first. Then once the surgeon sees the patient, they would just operate and then they send it to radiation. I think complications, I think people think radiation therapy gives a lot of toxicity. True, we do give toxicity. It's not like surgery doesn't give toxicity. But I think radiation technology has improved a lot. And personally, I don't know if I'll take this, but I'm not sure this audience is ready because right now we're getting so precise to proton therapy, which I talk about a little bit because I don't think this is the right audience. But 
when we get into a better technology, better precise targeting, then avoid less toxicity. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I really want to talk about HPV disease or pharynx cancer. I don't know how common it is in Russia, but um, there's a big push, at least in the United States, that to lower the dose of radiation or de-intensify treatment because they do very well. And I uh, have a trial where I drop the radiation dose to as low as 30 gray, which is three weeks of radiation with two cycles of chemotherapy for HPV positive or for cancer. The trial's ongoing. It's a pilot study. I have five patients with so far pathologic CRs already. The reason um, seven weeks of radiation head and cancer was set up is because that was the maximum dose the head and neck region can tolerate, meaning the normal tissue around. So there wasn't really good data to say, this type of tumor, we need seven weeks. This type of tumor, we need four weeks. We didn't really do those trials back in the old times, in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. We just said, this is how much radiation can give without hurting the patient. So that's how seven weeks was established. So I think um, at least, for example, oral pharynx cancer or HPV positive, there is no data saying that seven weeks is better than three weeks. And the only reason I picked three weeks is because in anal cancer, HPV positive anal cancer, three weeks was sufficient. So I just extended the biology of the cancer, which is HPV, from anal to head and neck. I think in Europe, um, overall, um, it's a mixed bag. Some countries, the uh, radiation is very advanced. Some countries, most countries, especially in Eastern Europe, the radiation is um, less advanced. And so in my mind, like, if you don't have the expertise, maybe surgery is the way to go in this part of the country. Um, but in the States, I can tell you, we're pretty equal and multidisciplinary. So it really depends on the expertise. You're absolutely right. And the insurance, the money, the cost,